So today I'm painting a blue jay and I am once again back to birds. Um, I do have a few other ideas in the pipeline. Next week I will be doing something a bit different. So I've got some autumn ideas, things like mushrooms, um, pumpkin, acorns, autumn leaves, uh, things like that. I'll be doing some simple loose style watercolour sketches of those. But for today I'm concentrating on this lovely blue jay. So once again this picture is from Pixabay. Um, I've never actually seen a blue jay in real life, we just don't get those in the UK, we have a different type of jay. Um, but I've realised that a lot of you watch these tutorials from outside the UK, particularly from the States, so I had a look for a different kind of bird I could use and I came across the blue jay and it's very lovely so that's what we're going to go with. I will list the equipment and the colours used in the description box below, but the main colours for this were cobalt blue, turquoise, quinacridone rose, yellow ochre and Payne's grey. Once again, it doesn't really matter if you don't have the exact tones of these, if you can find something similar that's fine or something just along the same lines will do, it does not need to be exact. I did a sketch to begin with and like last week's tutorial, I wet the back of the paper first before I started with the rest of the painting. I felt like that helped to keep the paper wet throughout the painting last week and I wanted to give it a go again. Um, and what you can see here is I've turned it over, I've put masking tape around the edges just to hold it down because it does curl with that water added to the back. And now I'm adding water on the front so I'll be ready to paint wet and wet shortly. I'm going to use a paper towel again just to dab around the bird itself so that there's not puddles of water um, and that way hopefully the paint will stay a bit more consistent and it won't dilute itself or form puddles around the page as can sometimes be the case. So I decided to try and split the bird up into a couple of parts, work on the face and the shoulders of the bird. Does a bird have shoulders? <laughs> um, the top half of the bird first and then move on to the wings and then the tail just to try and keep things a little more simple. For the areas around the head and along the back, which I'm painting in now, I used a mixture of cobalt blue and quinacridone rose to create more of a purpley blue rather than the turquoise blue that you'll see later on. I'm just adding it in um, onto that wet surface. I'm using water to blend the edges um, to keep everything nice and soft here. And this is just the initial layer, so it doesn't matter if it's not really dark. I'm gonna go over this again a couple more times. So this is just to outline the bird and indicate where I want most of the colors to be. The face and the front of the bird appear quite white. They're not as bright white as some of the areas along the wings, so it does need some colour adding in there. I'm using a bit of yellow ochre, mixing it in with the colour that was already down, so some of that blue and that red, to create more of a grey colour. And there's a lot of water in this mix, so that it's going to stay quite dilute, it's not going to be very obvious, it's just knocking back some of those really white highlights so that it's toned down a little bit. And now I'm outlining some areas of the bird which have this cooler blue colour and I'm using turquoise for that but a phthalo blue might work just as well. And I'm adding that on underneath. I'm trying to use a similar consistency of paint as to the paint that I added to the shoulders of the bird. We're calling them shoulders now. <laughs> um, so that it doesn't force any back runs and the paint just flows together quite nicely. So I'm trying to keep things consistent. I'm outlining areas. I am leaving the spaces uh, which are going to be white. If you wanted to, you could use masking fluid if you wanted to keep those areas completely free from paint so then you didn't have to think about missing them out all the time. But they're quite large areas here so I'm just avoiding them with the paint. And I guess if you do happen to go over them by accident, you can always use white gouache or acrylic at the end to put back those white highlights. I've used a little bit of the leftover mixture on the palette which is kind of a a combination of all of the colours I've used so far just to do the wing tips here. They're going to be a lot darker eventually, we're going to have some Payne's Grey in there so they it doesn't really matter what colours go in there because it's going to get a lot more layers on top of it. This part is kind of just repetition and it's going over what we did before. So I'm using cobalt blue and quinacridone rose here to go over the areas of the head and the shoulders of the bird, just making everything a little bit darker. You don't have to go over everything here and that way you're still gonna see some highlights from underneath. But I'm gonna build this up layer after layer using very similar colors each time. 
um, I'm making the left hand side of the bird a little bit darker just to indicate some shadow and help to indicate the form of the bird as well. You can vary the tones up a little bit here, you can see it's definitely more on the blue side um, or you could add some more red and make it more purple and that way you're just going to get a nice variation across the whole of the bird and it's not just going to seem like one block of colour so it, hopefully it's going to give it a bit more realism and make it just seem a little bit more, well, realistic I guess. Moving back down to the wings and the tail feathers, we're back to the turquoise colour just to keep it nice and cool. Sometimes I added cobalt blue here if I felt like the turquoise was a little bit too overpowering, it is quite a strong colour on its own. So you can mix other colours in with it so you get the right tone for your painting. There are a couple of areas where I added yellow ochre to the turquoise just to increase that green concentration and to vary the colour a little bit more ac across the wings. And here we have a bit more of a grey just to create some shadow details around the face which is um, primarily white but we're going to add in some extra colours as well for some dimension. You can see that I created that by kind of experimenting with the colours and just adding a mixture until I got what I wanted. Um, so there's a bit of the quinacridone rose in there, the yellow ochre and the blue mixture we had before is, is all in there. I like mixing on a palette like this where colours can all kind of swirl together. Um, and by using just a few colours, for me it helps to tie the whole painting together. Um, but if colour mixing is a bit of a struggle, there is nothing wrong with using multiple colours um, to get the look that you're going for. Here I just kind of mixed everything that was on the palette there to create this darker blue colour um, and that's why sometimes it's difficult to explain exactly what colours I'm using because everything's merged together by this point but it's just to get a little bit of a darker blue so there was some turquoise in there probably some cobalt blue as well the yellow ochre makes it a bit more green the red is just toning it down a little bit um, but watercolour is really fun like that by mixing things together in different amounts you can get so many different shades and tones of what you're going for and it doesn't need to be precise. Working in layers like this can be a bit more time consuming but I quite enjoy it because it gives me a bit more control over the painting and also as I'm building it up the layers underneath have time to dry and I get a good idea of how they're going to look when they're fully dry because they are going to dry a little bit lighter than the colour you put down. That gives me the opportunity then to make things darker which is what I'm doing here. I'm just making up a darker mix of the colours I used before and going over there adding in some of the shadow details. I'm also adding in some uh, turquoise highlights here. I'd lost some of that bright blue by turning things down so this was a nice opportunity to put back that really nice bright colour into the wings. So I might speed some of this up a little bit because now I'm back to the top and I'm going over using really similar colours again so that quinacridone rose and cobalt blue just to darken up the head and the back of the shoulders again. Um, and I'm working my way from the top to the bottom of the bird and kind of going again and again in different layers. So I'll probably speed this up a little bit, but that's the idea behind what I'm doing here.
I've added a little bit of turquoise into the mix just to put that in the face as well because it's not just one block of colour so that helps to separate things up a little bit. So after adding that turquoise, I'm now creating a darker version of it. So we've got turquoise, some cobalt blue, a little bit of quinacridone rose and some yellow ochre. It's really easy to overpower the colour if you add a little bit too much of one. Um, so you can mix this as much as you want until you get the right tone. I'm adding in some darker areas of the wings here. Because the paint underneath is still a little wet, it's going to spread out a little bit. So it's not going to be um, really highly detailed. It's all going to spread out and have nice soft edges, which is what I wanted. And now I can start to use this colour to paint the darker areas of the bird, the wingtips and some of the other areas and we're getting a little bit more detailed with every step of this now. I've added a little bit of just pure cobalt blue to this now to create some more blue turns. And I'm softening with a little bit of water as I go so if I ever put something down and it just feels like it's a little bit too clunky or it just doesn't quite fit I soften the edges with water so it helps to smooth it all together and I can go over it again. In this area I used turquoise to put in some of those highlights that really bright blue again and then I used a darker colour to outline some areas of the tail. I started to indicate some of the markings but I'm going to put those in properly with Payne's Grey later on. Okay so I appreciate you can't see the palette for this bit. Um, but because this is a bit more detailed, I'm using the rigger brush for this, it is, it's a little difficult to see it when you're zoomed out, so we're now going to concentrate on putting some of the detail around the face. I'm using primarily Payne's Grey for this. I have mixed in a little bit of the blue that I was using before, um, just to give it a bit more of a colour underneath so it's not just grey. And I'm outlining all of the areas around the bird's face. I think by putting in the darkest tones, it helps give you an idea if everything else is coming together properly and if you've got the values right of the rest of the colours. It also indicates if you need to make anything a little bit darker. So I thought I'd get this done, um, put in the darkest areas and then I'd be able to build up from that. So the pins grey showed me that there were a few areas that could definitely be darker so I've mixed more of that quinacridone rose and cobalt blue and made a really dark mix of it to add in some shadow detail here. Moving on to the beak, I tried to keep this as simple as possible. So this is just a watered down version of the grey, um, primarily Payne's grey, but there's probably a little bit of blue in there as well. As you saw on the palette, the plate <laughs> earlier, the colours do merge together. So I added that as the base. I used some really dark Payne's grey for the line work and some of the shadow details. And I also added a bit more of a purpley grey. Um, along the top there, which you can see, just to add in a couple of darker areas that weren't quite so dark as the Payne's Grey underneath. Mm -hmm. 
And as I mentioned before, now that we've added that Payne's Grey in, it's easier to see the contrast with the rest of the bird and to be able to indicate, or realise rather, um, which areas need a little bit more work and need to be a little bit darker because they don't look quite right now we've got the darkest tones so that's what i'm doing here i'm just darkening up some areas some of the feather details so that it is the right kind of tone and it fits in with the whole painting and every time i add a darker color I use water to blend the edges just so it's nice and soft and it doesn't seem really out of place with the rest of the feather details and the rest of the colours we've used so far. I'm using some of that leftover purple shadow colour just to add in some extra detail in the white feathers, just to put in the, uh, the shadow there. And I feel like I've built up the colour enough now to be able to put in the detail over the top so I'm going over this area now with Payne's Grey. Because we've already done a couple of layers previously to this that means that the feathers underneath are going to be pretty much the colour that we're wanting and we're not going to have to mess with that too much and it's a suitable time now to add in some of the finishing touches on top of these wingtips. The Payne's Grey that I'm using is still going to have some of that blue mixed to it so it's not just primarily grey but it's a really dark colour, this is going to be one of the darkest areas of the birds so it's quite a thick mixture to sit on top of what we've just put down. I'm using a rigger brush for this because it makes the line work a lot easier. It's It gives you quite a lot of control with the paint when you're doing this, so you don't have to draw each bit individually. You can do a pretty straight line in one movement with this. adding a little bit more cobalt blue in some areas now just to darken some of the feathers that appear a bit lighter now we've added that Payne's grey on top. I'm blending again with water just to go over some of those areas that we just painted. I like to have softer edges rather than have a lot of um, fine detail work. I like everything to be blended together but that's just my preference so if you preferred it as it was before you feel free to leave it. And exactly the same again with the tail feathers so just adding that Payne's Grey again. I'll soften some of the edges as I go um, and put in some of the detail. got some cobalt blue to darken some of the edges of the tail feathers and to put the line down the middle. So the jay is coming together quite nicely and I'm moving on to the branch in the background. I'm wetting it first with clean water and then I'm going to add in some colour on top of that. I wanted to try and keep the colours that I'd used for the jay so everything's tied together. So I'm using some red, some yellow ochre and a little bit of that blue to create the, the first 
brown, which is a lighter brown. And then going to make that a little bit darker, probably adding some more blue and red to the mix so it's a darker brown. And just dot in that colour over the top of it to create some of those shadow details. But because the water's been added before, it's all going to blend together really nicely and it's going to do its own thing, which is what I want. I want it nice and loose and I don't want to mess with it too much. So depending on how your own painting's gone, you might be pretty close to finished at this point and you might not need to do all these steps. Um, not everyone will have to do the same amount of layers, a lot of it depends on the type of paint you're using and how light your washes are, so you might not have to go over it again if you don't want to. I've decided to go over again with a light wash of colour to tie everything in together. Working in layers, sometimes some areas can be disjointed, so what I've done here is create a light wash of cobalt blue and quinacridone rose to tie everything together on the face and the back, and then I'm using some turquoise and cobalt blue as a wash to go over the wing to tie everything in together at the bottom half of the bird. Um, I made sure that the painting was dry underneath before I did this because I didn't want the colours all merging together. I just wanted to tie it together nicely by putting on a layer over the top without disturbing the paint underneath too much. Now I'm adding a really light purpley blue grey colour, um, that's very technical, um, a really light purple to the white areas to break up some of that bright white highlights and to indicate some of the feather shapes. I'm not going overboard here because this is the brightest part of the bird but it should still have a little bit of colour to it to tie it all together. Moving on to the eye, I started out with blue as the base. It was um, a bit more turquoise blue, I think, but it was a mixture of the colours that were on the palette. I used more of a bluey grey for some of the darker areas and then pure Payne's grey for some of the darkest parts of the eye. I went a little bit overboard with the darker areas here. I meant to preserve a highlight and I didn't really, but I will add some gouache on top of that later, so it's not too bad. Um, but if you are able to, the plan here was to leave the top half primarily blue and have the bottom half uh, a darker colour. So we're close to finishing touches now on this painting. I'm adding some of that darker branch colour along the bottom. Because it's dried now, that's going to mean this area stands out and it's a nice shadow tone for the branch. I'm also going to add some white gouache highlights to the eye that I went a little bit overboard on. <laughs> um, but it's just doing little things now to try and tie everything in together. Here I'm using some clean water just to remove some of the paint from the branch on the right hand side. I'm lifting it out with clean water and the brush and then just tapping it with a paper towel to remove some of that colour. The branch on the right hand side just seemed too thick in comparison to what it looked like on the left of the bird and it just didn't really look right. It should get thinner as it goes along so I just tried to fix that there. Okay, so it is now time for a background and I'm going to create a similar style background to the one that I used for the Robin painting that I did. Um, I'll link you to that video here if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but the idea is just to create some abstract splatter effects in the background using a complementary colour. Um, if you don't want to do this part, that is absolutely fine. Or if you want to watch and see if I ruin mine first, you can do. And then decide whether you think it looks better with or without a background. It's always quite nerve-wracking doing this after you've finished your painting. Because you don't want to spoil what you did already. But I'm going for it here, so let's see what happens. I'm adding clean water to begin with, just to outline a few areas where I want the paint to sit. And then I'm going over that with this colour, which is a bit of a mix of yellow ochre and quinacridone rose for a nice orange. 
and then I'm going to darken that up and add in a few more splatters of the darker colour on top of that. It's just supposed to be abstract, not really thinking about it too much, just putting paint that here, there and everywhere. It's going to hit some dry parts of the paper and some wet parts, so it's going to look a bit different. I feel like I haven't done paint splatters for a while, so we're going for that <laughs> with this one. I've put a paper towel across the blue jay just so I don't ruin it, and I'm taking that darker colour and just hitting the back of the brush so that it splats nicely onto the paint underneath. It's got to be quite a nice consistency to do that. You don't want it too thick because it's not going to come off of the brush, <laughs> and too watery, you're not going to really see it. I'm also adding in a few finishing touches here by just placing a couple of those splatters so that it looks a bit more... Um, aesthetically pleasing. And there we have it, one finished Blue Jay painting. I hope that was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching, um, especially if you've got this far all the way through to the end. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, I also wanted to take this time as well just to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed recently. I know this is a new channel, but it's really lovely to see so many lovely comments, um, great suggestions. It's really appreciated. All of the likes and the subscriptions that have come through recently um, yeah, it's very lovely and very much appreciated. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week. It'll be something a little bit different, some more loose style, simple autumn sketches. So I will be back next Wednesday with that. <laughs>